The Horrors of an Ayn Rand World by Gary Weiss with alternate slash St. Martin's Press. This story is so either misguided or a, a deliberately misleading attack on objectivism, I almost don't know where to start. So I'm just going to read and respond to each of it, each, each element here as I go. But there is just so much consistent logical fallacy and deliberate ignoring of reality in this, in this piece. I just had to respond. And it was certainly a, a more worthwhile target than you know some of the former White House staffer loudmouths that just don't seem to be willing to shut up and go away. An objectivist America would be a dark age of unhindered free enterprise far more primitive and Darwinian than anything seen before. I mean, right here in the first sentence. Unhindered free enterprise. So we should hinder free enterprise. How should free enterprise be hindered? Well, by force of government, of course. Dark age. Right, because it wasn't technology that raised us out of the dark ages. It, wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with the Industrial Revolution or people coming together peacefully in free exchanges in a free market to benefit humanity, to develop new ideas and technologies. Okay, far more primitive and Darwinian. How, I mean, right away, holy shit, is this backwards? Dar back, primitive and Darwinian. If Darwinianism is supposed to be about evolution and evolve me, evolving and progressing, then this would be advancing, not making it more primitive. But hey, there, there, there you have the obvious bullshit right out of the way in the first sentence. There is no real doubt what an objectivist America would mean. We may not be around to see it, but it's likely we'll be here for its earliest manifestations. They may have already arrived. <gasps> oh my God, the objectivists are here. Obama's in charge. He might be running against Mitt Romney and we have two candidates that believe in government-run health care. We have a government that believes in conducting wars all over the place and running your lives and telling you how to run your business and how much of your income you're allowed to keep in. We have to worry about the objectivists taking over the world and leaving everyone alone. They may have already arrived. Yeah, well, we're here. <laughs> but we are far from arrived in this sense. The shape of a future objectivist world has been a matter of public record for the past half century since Ayn Rand, the Brandons, Alan Greenspan, and other objectivist theoreticians began to set down their views in objectivist newsletters. When he casually defended repeal of child labor laws in the debate with Miles Rapoport, Aaron Brook, president of the Ayn Rand Institute, was merely repeating long-established objectivist doctrine summarized by Leonard Paikoff as government is inherently negative. It is a worldview that has been static through the decades, its tenets reiterated endlessly by Rand and her apostles. Government is inherently negative. Well, what is government? Government is force, as George Washington said it. Not reason or eloquence, but force, like fire, a dangerous servant, and a fearful master. So force, using force against people, is that always bad? Inherently negative? No, but if they're acting peacefully and you don't have a justification for using that force other than, hey, if I force you to do this, it's going to make your life better. It's morally wrong. So it is inherently negative. It is. Government is inherently negative. No government except the police, courts of law, and the armed services. Well, that's not true. And I think, you know, real objectivists uh, end up as anarcho-capitalists and would like to see even police, courts of law, and armed services functions handled by the free market. That would be the true philosophical libertarian position. No regulation of anything by any government. Correct! Why should society be regulated by force and violence? Why not be regulated by the collective decisions of people acting freely in the market, wanting people to behave well, and serve each other's needs and interests? which is how you make money in a free market, as opposed to in a government-controlled market where you make money by ripping off the taxpayers, by fooling them into believing that a government program is necessary or that your project needs to be subsidized by government. So yeah, no regulation of anything by force or violence. Absolutely. No Medicare or Medicaid. Absolutely. No Medicare, no Medicaid. Let's not resort to violence to take care of people. Is that such a radical idea? Unfortunately, it is radical when the status quo has become so sick. No social security. Yeah, absolutely. If people want to voluntarily to contribute to something that's going to be a retirement plan that's going to serve their needs and not let the government steal from it, I think that would be better than social security, don't you? No public schools. Again, the greatest misnomer here. 
They're not public workers. They're employees who are funded by theft from the government. Public schools. How ironic is it that we take our children to these government-run indoctrination centers and teach them that stealing is wrong and hitting is bad, and yet they know that their teachers' salaries come from threats of putting people in cages if they don't give the government money to pay those salaries. You put them in a situation where they know that if they don't show up to school, and every kid asks this at some point, every kid goes through this thought process says, mommy, daddy, why do I have to go to school? I like school, but why do I have to go to school? Or I hate school, so why do I have to? And they, parents don't have a good answer for that, generally speaking, but they're able to communicate quite clearly to the children that it is force. That if you don't go to school, mommy and daddy might get in trouble. You might get taken away. If we don't put you in this school, well, you know, the government's going to come and take us and put us in cages or put you away, but it's for your own good, so you should just put up with it. That's a pretty sick fucking twisted way to raise your kids, if you ask me. No public hospitals. Well, they should all be public, but yeah, they shouldn't be funded by the violence of government. No public anything, in fact, just individuals, each looking out for himself, not asking for help or giving help to anyone. This is the greatest red herring that is raised against libertarian objectivist philosophy. Just individuals, each looking out for himself. Well, yes, technically it could be seen that way. Not asking for help or giving help to anyone. Bullshit. You don't need government to help people. You don't need government to encourage the kindness of the human heart. You don't need the guns of the enforcers of government to make people be good to each other, to help each other. No, we have a natural inclination to do that, and we have perverted it by institutionalizing it in government. An objectivist America would be a dark age of unhindered free enterprise, far more primitive and Darwinian than anything seen before. Objectivists know this. What perhaps they do not always appreciate, given their less than fanatical approach to reality, is that is what turning back the clock would mean, or perhaps they do not care. We're not talking about turning back the clock. We're talking about advancing humanity to get past violence, to get past statism. When Alan Greenspan spoke out against building codes, he knew perfectly well what a lack of adequate building and fire codes would mean. Fifteen years before his birth, 146 people, mostly young women, were burned alive or leaped to their death from the fire at the Triangle Waste Factory just east of Washington Square Park in New York City. There is no requirement for employers to provide a safe workplace, so none was provided. <sighs> Again, a fallacy of extrapolation here and taking a single historical incidence and saying that if we just, if we just use the force of government to shut down businesses that didn't do exactly what the government said, you know, then we're going to have buildings catching on fire all over the place. The implication here is that this wasn't a mistake, that this was deliberate, that the Triangle Waste Factory wanted their factory to burn down. No, they wanted to strike a balance between what they were able to invest in the time and company safety and their profits. It's a balance that we all have to strike. It's a risk that we all take, and it, it was a mistake. They screwed up their calculation. The free market's not perfect, but at least it's not as immoral as government. Hey, wait, it's not immoral at all if it's a true free market. But mistakes like this happen, uh, and when mistakes like this happen, people who are afraid and don't understand reality are tempted to say things like, anywhere in the world where building codes are inadequate or absent, the result is always the same. Dead people. In an objectivist world, the reset button would be pushed on government services that we take for granted. They would not be cut back, not reduced, they would vanish. Now that's not exactly true, because objectivists, at least most of us, like myself, are also realists, and we don't want to, while we, while we have this ideal... We have to look at reality and present status subjectively and say that we don't want to pull the rug out from underneath anybody. This is exactly what Ron Paul advocates in his policy platform as a voluntarist. I believe he would call himself uh, an, an objectivist. Maybe not, but certainly a voluntarist, an anarcho-capitalist. And <laughs> as he says, he wants to end the foreign policy spending and then phase out the, the domestic welfare state, but start by localizing it, you know, Bring it back to the communities at the local level instead of... Anyways. In an objectivist world, roads would go unplowed in the snows of winter. Not true. Bridges would fall as the government withdrew from the business of maintaining them. Possibly if they were bridges that shouldn't have been there in the first place that were only there because government contractors decided to put them in a place that served the special interests of government rather than the transportation needs of the people. So possibly... 
Unless some private citizen would find it in his rational self-interest to voluntarily take off the take up the slack by scraping off the rust and replacing frayed cables. Yes, there would be privately owned or community owned infrastructure. Big surprise. Yes, it would be in someone's best interest to provide that service because it's something that people want to consume. It's something that people need. We don't need the government violence to do this. Ugh. <laughs> Public parks and land from the tiniest vest pocked patch of green to vast expanses of the West would be sold off to the newly liberated mega corporations. Mega corporations are products of government. Airplane traffic would be grounded unless a profit making capitalist founded in his own selfish interest to fund the air traffic control system. Hello? You think the, the airline companies could pitch in and do a better job than the FAA? Fuck yeah! A better job at security than the TSA without groping you? Fuck yeah! America! Fuck yeah! If it could be made profitable, fine. If not, tough luck. The market has spoken. Exactly! Exactly! If the government decides whether it happens, it's based on special interests and the whims of government and the desires of people to control others. Whereas in the free market, it's if it can be made profitable. That is, if people want it. The Coast Guard would stay in port while storm-tossed mariners drown lustily as they did in days of yore. No, no, no. I mean, there's the, you know we could we could go on with with each of these examples, um, and it, it's just one thing after another. I don't think people want me to do this and and explain all of these ways, but that, that that the free market is superior to government and how all of these things are are what we are we allow government to scare us into thinking that we need government for. So I'll skip ahead here. Um, such is the Ayn Rand vision of paradise, an America that would resemble the lands from which our ancestors immigrated, altruism confined to ignored fringe texts, grinding poverty and starvation coexisting alongside the opulence of the wealthy. Los Angeles, Chicago, New York would become like Cairo and Calcutta with walled enclaves protecting the wealthy from malnourished, uneducated masses outside. Yaron Brook was right. What's at stake is not a political issue, but a moral philosophical issue. Well, here I agree. And the moral philosophical issue is that government is morally wrong because it constitutes of it, it is premised on the initiation of force against people that are acting peacefully. Yes, absolutely, this is a moral philosophical issue. In large numbers, Americans have sometimes unwittingly abandoned the moral code upon which they were raised. They have done so because of a master storyteller. Ayn Rand's stories of noble steel barons, fierce railroad magnates, and sniveling government bureaucrats form the basis of her ideology. It is a compelling narrative, and Oliver Stone's abortive approach to the fountainhead suggests a remedy to the Rand narrative, a counter-narrative, one that celebrates a creator with a conscience, government not as a Soviet gun, but as a builder, a benefactor. It is an optimistic vision born in an America of hope and not a Russia of despair and privation. This counter-narrative can recognize the merits of individuality and self-interest while rejecting her celebration of the darker impulses, greed, and selfishness. No. Would you say that the government here in the United States is a builder, a benefactor? Well, part of this is the unseen costs of the government intervention in the market, all the things that money does not go to fund that would make people's lives better when it instead goes to fund war and police oppression and government handouts to big businesses and the military industrial complex and corporatism and on and on and on. We need to understand the basis of Rand's morality, not just its origins, but where it doesn't originate. The three great monotheistic religions, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the other writings and actions of the Founding Fathers. The words capitalism, markets, and free enterprise appear in none of the founding documents of America. The natural enemies of Ayn Rand are not only Lenin and Roosevelt, but Jefferson, Rousseau, and Paine. Um, no, uh, that's, that's a big stretch. Now, yes, it's true that we are not as objectivists making the false appeals to authority or the false appeals to religion, but uh, Jefferson, Rousseau, and Paine were people that moved these ideas forward. My objectivist friends are right that morality needs to become part of the national dialogue. Yeah, and when it does, we won't have government. However, we feel about Rand, we need to ponder her views and think more philosophically. We need to evaluate our own core values and understand the moral foundations of the social programs and government agencies that are targeted by the right. Why do we pay for medical care of the poor and the elderly? Well, we pay for it because we care about them. We put up with the government stealing because we don't have another option. Why do we regulate business? Why do we pave roads and maintain parks and build public schools? Why do we subsidize? You know why all these, you do all this shit? Because you've been scared into thinking that you need violence, that you need government. 
It's right if we hold a different concept of right and wrong than objectivists and their allies on the right. It's a question of fundamental moral values as defined by our national and religious traditions. Or by Atlas Shrug, the fountainhead, the virtue of selfishness and capitalism, the unknown ideal. We need to choose our heritage or Ayn Rand. No, you need to choose whether you have the faith in humanity that we can accomplish all of the things that we supposedly accomplish through government instead through peaceful, voluntary, cooperative means. Peaceful, voluntary, cooperative means. That's what I have faith in. That's my belief. And that is absolutely superior. And I make no bones about it. That is an absolutely superior worldview to that which says that human nature needs violence to survive. We are evolving past people like you, Mr. Gary Weiss.